So I'm having some problems here with my trusty old tractor. And that's because the last time I used it in class now, I managed to run the diesel tank dry. So I had a lot of work bleeding the system to get it to start again. And once I finally managed to get it uh, up and running again, I drove it straight into the garage. Now I was pretty sure that the tank was half full when I started the drive, but it was not. And that's because we are having some problems with the fuel system. So as you can see, the engine is pretty wet, especially around the fuel filter uh, and also around the injector lines. Now I'm not really sure exactly where it's coming from, but it could be multiple leakages. But anyway, I think we will start with the fuel filter because as you can see, this bowl is not exactly clean. I'm not really sure if it's any diesel left in the tank, so we'll use this just in case. So it doesn't look as bad as it could have been, but it definitely needs some cleaning. So I'm guessing that much of what was in here was rust and water. Now that's also probably the reason why this ended up leaking in the first place. Because it's been really, really cold where we lived the past days. And if there is some water in the fuel, then it will, it will freeze. And as ice expands a lot more than the water, then something has to give. And usually that's the equipment around the water. So this looks almost like brand new now. I'm guessing this is probably some of the reason why it's been leaking. Because this seal ring is really hard and also it looks really bad. So I have some new parts. I have a new filter with seals. Since we first are, uh, we need to exchange this as well. And also I bought a new seal ring for this screw. Well, I wonder if this is the same one because it actually feels a bit smaller. Oh, there we go. So then we need to remove the old filter and change all the old sealants. I think this has seen better days, it's really filthy. Let's try with this. There we go. New ring. I'm guessing the final ring is for this tapping screw. So 
is probably to, to let out water from the system. Alright, so this job is done. Now I'm not really sure where the leak actually came from. So I think we need to fill the tank up with some diesel and bleed the system and see if it's more leaks. It looked a bit scary there for a while, but it was probably just me not tightening the plastic tap enough. It's always a bit scary when you're tightening something in plastic because it breaks easily. The next thing we're going to do is to bleed the injector lines. I'm guessing there's a lot of different ways to do this, but the way I've learned is to open up the injector lines and pump until we see uh, diesel in all of them and then tighten that back together to, to get out the air from the lines. So first we need to bleed the diesel pump. And that should be enough. Don't want to waste any more diesel than I need to. Then we can start to pump and bleed the injector lines. So yesterday we were having a bit of problems getting the diesel up to the injector lines. Today is a new day, so we will have a look at that. Uh, also, I'm, I'm in a bit of a hurry now because my wife needs to get out with the car. And it's been pouring down with snow outside, so I really need to get this tractor running so I can clear the snow. So we need to do some fault searching. Now we know that we have diesel in the, the filter cup. And also we know that we have diesel in the pump because I tested that yesterday. So let's see if we have any diesel. Yeah. We have pressure. Now, I'm not an expert in this, but I'm starting to expect that you can't use the hand pump to pump uh, diesel all the way up to injectors. Because all the videos I've seen where they have bled the system, they have uh, used the starch engine to, to crank the engine over. So that's a problem on this tractor because the battery head is way too small. And the last time uh, when I bled injectors with the start engine, I had to borrow power from my car. Now that's a problem because we are face first into the garage now and the starter cables I have aren't long enough. So maybe we can get some help from my charger here, but these cables aren't too thick and I'm expecting that it won't like that. But anyway, uh, we will crack the inject lines again and crank it over the starter engine and then we have a uh, terminal we'll seat.
So my suspicions were correct, you can't bleed it all the way with a hand pump. Now the tractor is running and what we will do now is that we will wipe down the engine and we will take it for a test drive because I really need to clear this snow. And also that's a good opportunity to have a look and see if it's still leaking or if it's leaking from other places as well. So that's what we will do. So we finished testing the tractor and it's also been sitting for almost two weeks. Uh, it was not my intention to leave it for this long, but you know, life happens. Um, so that means that if it was leaking on the same rate as it, as it used to, the, all the diesel that we put into the tank would be on the flow right now. Now luckily, uh, the meter still shows a little less than half full and that's the same place uh, where we left it uh, two weeks ago. So that means that we have fixed the main leak. Now I do see that the engine is still sweating a bit of diesel, especially around the injector lines. Uh, no, I I'm not really sure where that's coming from, so it's difficult to do anything about it. So uh, my plan there is to tighten down all the nuts and uh, wipe it down and leave it for some time and see if I can see uh, where it's coming from. So I haven't really done any maintenance on this tractor since I got it. So I think it's also time to have a look at the oil and the air filter. It looks like it's a bit too much oil in there, but the oil barely looks used. So I think this is good. We will leave it as it is. So this is not good. I believe this is an oil bath kind of air filter. And the way these are supposed to work is that the air is sucked through oil. Uh, and debris and, and uh, particles in the air are trapped in the oil. So there is no oil in here. So that means that this, this is not working. So I think we need to have a clean. We will clean this. And... Probably also I need to see if I can clean this a bit and then we will fill it with oil again and put it back together. So I think that we will say that these are clean enough for now. Uh, now I just need to consult with the internet to find out what kind of oil I'm supposed to have in there. So I've just consulted the internet and it has provided me some answers. Uh, actually many, many answers, different answers. And that leads me to believe that it's not really that important what kind of oil you use. So I'm going to use this 10W40, uh, it's a fully synthetic oil. And some leftovers from uh, an oil change that I did. Uh, of course this new oil, not used. But also, several people had answered this kind of oil, so hopefully this will work. When it comes to the oil level, I couldn't find anything about it. Uh, but I did find a picture that showed that the oil level were up to these holes. So that's what I'm going with.
So that's also as much oil as I had, so that worked out perfectly. So I trust the old tractor is back up and running, and that's good because this is a tractor that we use a lot. Uh, now some of you may be wondering why I'm not using the other tractor when this is not working. And that's because the other tractor is a project. There's a lot more things wrong with that than with this. The plan is of course to do the work on the other tractor, but for now I just have not had the time. And so when we do need one tractor and none of them works, then we take the path of least resistance, and that is to fix this one. So that's the reason. But there will be more videos. We will, of course, do the work on other tractors as well, uh, especially maybe when, uh, when it's a bit warmer outside and maybe not as much rain because I don't have another garage for it. So if you want to see those videos, then remember to hit the subscribe button. And also, if you want to be absolutely sure that you see our new videos when they come, hit the notification bell because just a subscriber isn't enough anymore unless you are using the subscription feed when you find the new videos you want to see. So then it's only left for me to say bye for now and I will be seeing all of you on the next video. Bye.